Welcome to this second presentation on dis discrete systems. Um, in the first presentation we introduced a very basic discrete system which simply scaled the input by a factor of 2 by multiplying all the input um, um, values by a value of 2. Um, in this one we're going to look at a little bit more complicated system, one with something that caused a bit of confusion at the very start, um, delays. Um, so it's, there's a, a thing called a delay operator um, which once you get the handle of that you should be able to handle any discrete system. Um, so let's just draw out the system that we'd like to consider. So our system is going to have um, an adder and a delay. And here's our adder element. And here's our delay element here. Okay. And there's two values being fed into the adder. And the result of the addition is sent to our output, which is, as usual, labeled Y of N and our input is labelled x of n. So that's the convention that's followed. You must learn that x of n is the standard notation for an input and y of n is the standard notation for an output. Okay, um, so x of n, I'm just going to use a sequence of numbers at random to represent x of n. So I'll put 2, 9, uh, 3, 4 and 6. Okay, so that's our input sequence of numbers to this system here. So um, this is the system, the numbers are going to be passed through and we're going to get a sequence of numbers as our output because that's what a discrete system does. It takes a sequence of numbers as its input and generates a sequence of numbers as its output. Okay, so let's think about how this system will work. Um, the first thing that will happen with the system is uh, the number 2 will be pushed into the system because that's the first element of x of n which we could refer to as x bracket 0 if we wished so that could be referred to as x bracket 0 um, but that first element is pushed onto the system and it'll appear here on this branch now just accept this for the moment but on this branch we're going to have a value of 0 initially Basically we don't know what sample is there, so we're just going to assume it's zero. So the two and the zero will be added together by this adder operator, which will generate a value of two. And that value of two will then be pushed out and becomes the first output, two. That's, that's fairly straightforward. Um, okay, so let's just clear that. Uh, we'll record the result. So the first output, two, which will of course be y y of 0 y of 0 okay um, so the next in sample that will be pushed into the system will be the number 9 so that 9 will be placed on here and 9 will appear on this branch of my discrete system now this is where the delay operator kicks in if the value of 2 appeared on this this branch previously well then the value of 2 will appear on this branch the next time. The delay operator effectively delayed the sample by one time period, one um, sample interval, uh, and then pushed it onto this branch. So now the 2 and the 9 are, will be added together by the, um, by the adder operator to produce a value of 11 at the output. So that value of 11 is pushed down here to become y square bracket 1. <coughs> So let's just clear all that and we'll record the result again. So sorry, the result of the first one was a 2 and then 11. Okay. Um, so moving on to the next value. So hopefully you'll get the hang of this when we go through a couple. But once you get the delay operator, um, the discrete systems become very straightforward. So the value of 3 is the next sample, it'll be pushed onto the system. Now, what was previously on this branch? Well, the previous value on that branch was a value of 9. So that value of 9 will now appear on this branch here. 
So the 9 will be added to the 3 and that will give an output of 12 and then that value of 12 will be taken and it will be pushed down to the output down here to become y2. OK, so you're starting to see hopefully how this works. Uh, I'm just going to record the output again to a value of 12 um, and we'll take our next input which will be 4, be pushed onto the system, it'll appear on this branch so the value on this branch will be the previous value on this one up here so that'll be a value of 3 uh, 3 will be added to the 4 which will give a value of 7 and we get a value of 7 uh, as our next output and we may as well go through them all so we got a 7 here um, next output will be the 6 the 6 will be pushed onto the system the previous value was up in this branch was 4 so that will appear here the next output of the adder will be 10 which was then our next output of our discrete signal being outputted y of n so that value of 10 appears here ok um, so let's just clear all that record the last output and let's see what happens now this is where it gets a little bit interesting I suppose um, so the previous value on this branch here was 6 so we know that the 6 will appear down here but what will appear up here if there's a 6 down in this branch well what you do is you assume that there's values of 0 coming after the discrete the, 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 the defined signal x of n so in theory actually you, you'd assume there's an infinite number of zeros coming afterwards and interestingly enough you also assume that there's an infinite number of zeros beforehand okay um, but for the moment we'll focus on the case where the zeros are coming afterwards so if there are, we assume there's zeros coming afterwards so the next input is then going to be a value of 0 on this branch. So 6 will be added to 0 which will give you uh, another value of uh, will give you a value of 6 which will mean your output will be 6. Okay. Um, so let's just clear all that. We'll record the result again. Okay. Um, so imagine we do have lots of zeros again coming afterwards so with that zero here has been passed through the system so this one has gone through the system already uh, so it will appear here on this branch and this zero will be pushed up here so our next output will be zero um, and that would appear here as the next output and if we're assuming that there is an infinite number of zeros following this zero so there's loads of zeros all the way down then there will also be lots of zeros following on the output but we don't bother showing the uh, negative values we know that there's going to be zeros forever after this so we all we need to show in our output are the non-zero values okay um, so it's interesting to note if we put in one two three four five va non-zero values into this system we get one two three four five six values at the output, non-zero values at the output. Okay? And that's purely because of the delay operator and how it works. Okay, um <coughs> hopefully you you understood um all that. Um if if you didn't you need to go just go back through that and maybe go through, after we go through a few more examples you'll you'll get it. Um but that is probably the most difficult thing about a discrete system. So um to finish up on this presentation I'm just going to show the um, difference equation as I said you really need to be able to, to switch between the signal flow diagram views and the, the mathematical views of the dis discrete system which is the difference equation so the difference equation for this system is y of n so the output is always on the left hand side is equal to Let's see, what is it? It's 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 two things are being added together. X of n 
has been added with um, a delayed version of x of n. Now mathematically we re represent that as x of n minus 1. Okay. Now that can be a bit of a source of confusion for people as well when they start off. But generally what I say in order to try to make it a little bit more understandable is to maybe use this difference equation to solve the output. So let's use this difference equation to solve the output. So let's first of all solve the determine the output by substituting n equal to zero. So the first output. Well what is it? Well it's going to be x0, which is our first input, plus x0 minus 1, n has been substituted for 0, x of minus 1. Now that, what does that mean? What's, a, what's x of minus 1? Well really it will be the value that's up here. So this is my sequence of numbers. What's the previous value? Now it's not explicitly defined so we assume that it's 0. So we assume that's 0 if it's not explicitly defined. So the first output is just going to be x0, which is a value of 2. So y0 has a value of 2. Now let's move on to the next sample, y1. So in our difference equation, we're substituting n for a value of 1. Um, and what does that give us? So we have x, n has been substituted for 1, so x of 1 plus n minus 1 is 0, so x of 0. Okay, so that's the previous sample. X of 0 is the previous sample in this case. So x of 1 is 9 plus x 0, which is 2, and that equals 11. We'll do one more just to, to run through that. Um, we have a value of y for n equal to 2. So we'll substitute n equal to 2. That's x of x of 2 plus x of, well, what's n minus 1 again, so that's going to be x of 1, which is equal to x of 2, which is a value of 3, plus x1, so just looking over here, that's x1, um, that's a value of 9, so that's equal to 12. And you can see that the values we're getting out of our difference equation are the same as the values that we were getting out of our uh, signal flow diagram interpretation of the system. Okay. Okay. So in this presentation, we basically just introduced the delay operator and the adder operator. And um, there are only three operators in a discrete system. So if you can get a handle on those three, with the delay probably being the most difficult, um, because you, you you may not have seen anything like that before. Um, if you can get your ha handle around those three operators, um, you should have no problem with discrete systems. Okay, thanks for your attention.